what is going on guys it's your boy cash and this is exciting this is the ufo section of the mfo episode so as i said before obviously i'm not going to do like any crazy intros but it's it's so cool uh that let me show you guys rolling up here that this video got 2,000 views which is really good for a random kind of episode something that i'm trying out uh, yes i based it on gotchas because this is a this is a majority gotcha game channel right so it's still cool it got 100 comments we got 200 likes 10 dislikes but i didn't even wasn't even able to find 10 comments of people actually explaining themselves which would have been nice but you know fuck me right i was looking for people to disagree with me here i was looking for the 10 like the, these people that dislike my video uh, i would love two of them if they would have came out uh, most of the people in the comment section do agree with me in the sentiments that I put into this video. I did find a couple of comments. I think there was one a person that kind of uh, uh, hit back on me. And I just want to say before that, in these UFOs is that, guys, don't be afraid if, if you disagree. Like, you could dislike the video. I don't give a fuck. It, it honestly does nothing. Um, <laughs> like goals are, just a heads up, like goals are usually that people, when a content creator does that, it's specifically to uh, judge engagement of actually seeing what people like. Dislikes, you can use it for the same thing. Oh, people dislike this video, but most of the time people that don't like something, they won't watch it in full. They won't interact with it. They won't comment. They won't do any of that if they really dislike it. Well, actually, sometimes if they really dislike it, <laughs> they will comment and they'll tell you how shit you are and stuff like that. Even though this video is UFO, it's all about your guys uh, and trying to highlight and like I said, there's a hundred comments here. I'm only picking out a couple. A lot of people are saying the same, a similar thing. So just going to disclaimer the video that, you know, I just picked out a couple that I thought would represent the whole of, of the argument to the best of my capabilities. So let me go to this first uh, thing that I have here and it's from Zan. And I thought this comment was the first thing that I grabbed because I thought it was a really important thing. And he says, gotcha is evolving, bro. So you need to give it more time to be more refined. Most successful gotchas nowadays are the ones which heavily influenced by OGs like Summoner's War, Grand Blue Fantasy, FGO, I, I forget what the hell FGO is, 7K, which I think is Seven Nights, but they evolved themselves mid middle way and tried to create their own color. Nowadays, BS like no auto repeat, skip tickets, and no pity is almost unacceptable. This is proof that gotcha is evolving towards a good end. Not saying it is, it's in the best condition since we still face with retarded issues such as predatory money, money packages, and reliance on power creep as means to make money instead of true content. However, I could say that even this BS will slowly diminish over time. In the future, game de developer will refer to current top tier gotchas such as Epic 7, 7 Deadly Sins, EH, uh, uh, Exos Heroes as their benchmark instead of the OG. The cycle will go on and the base quality of life in gotchas will be much better. Nonetheless, the issues of predatory money schemes will be hard to tackle on since it can be argued as the key component of gotcha. What we can expect in game the publisher breakthrough from the mindset of reaping fast cash from whales 700 dollars for a three-day summer banner that was an issue in uh, Exos Heroes to spreading the net to what small minor uh my minu my well i don't know uh, with far more affordable packages frequently one to two dollar packages for tidbits well there goes my wall of text as usual it's mfo so i do like what he's saying here that the gotcha games are evolving specifically because i mean it's true they're they're slowly getting better and i i that's why i always stress that there's a comment that i saw that i'm not highlighting it because it was it's a very small comment but it was a person that said that, you know, I was being negative because I constantly talk about what I don't like in the games that I'm playing. But when I play Exos Heroes, I was, yeah, I'll say something. When I, Epic 7, I was like, they need to change this. They need to change this. Sometimes I'll make a video on it. Sometimes I just make a statement. But I think that when people complain about an aspect of a game over and over and over, the devs eventually have to take notice and they have to fix it. And I do think that what he's saying here is important because I do think that the devs know that they know the skeleton of a gotcha they know the skeleton build every gotcha has the same kind of skeleton and when they want to make it into a full human being they kind of need the community to tell them what they what they want because 
there's no purpose of them just kind of do like yes they'll they'll take their own risk every once in a while and you know i think it's fine if they take a risk or two but they do want input from the community because it's it's easy it makes it easier why do what last of us 2 did why why even take that risk you don't need to and i i, I actually not that i completely applaud them for taking a risk but why take a risk to that level when you don't have to there are game devs that literally will just listen to the community and let them literally make the game for themselves literally mario maker <laughs> and that would allow the community to just to enjoy with the content that they want now obviously not everyone's going to see eye to eye on everything so yes some person might want the pity to be lowered some other person thinks it's perfectly fine this person wants that this person wants that so it's usually like majority rules and then you obviously appeal to the majority of the community you keep the majority of your player base that's usually how that should work um so yeah i just wanted to highlight that comment that i do think gotchas are evolving and i do think it's because of a person like myself and the purple people like me that are willing to speak out to not just see something not like it and then just say that well it's it is what it is i think that that's why it, it does change like the, the company could leave it as a skeleton if you're fine with it being a skeleton i personally am not if i think a game has potential i will say hey i think this has potential we just need to do this that and the third i think teachers do that to students you know or, or, or coaches do that to their players they might not try to help every single player you know or something like that i think the the quote was in love and basketball i think it was when the the player was getting pissed at the coach that she was being so aggressive towards her more than anyone else and the coach said that's because i actually believe in you <laughs> I actually think you have potential. Uh, if I if I don't say anything to you, you should actually be concerned that I don't care. Like I, I don't. I, I think you're hopeless. Like, there's no purpose of me investing my time into you. And I think that that's really indicative of this. Like you shouldn't take it that people are complaining about a game. And to be fair, on the same side, people will complain and have no solutions. But a person like me always gives solutions. I always want to see this because of this. I don't like this. We should do this. And I think that there's a little divide when. When I see a, um, a person complaining about an uh, aspect of a game or anything and they don't give a solution, like, how do you want that to be fixed? And it's like, well, you figure it out. I just don't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, let's go to <clears throat> the next one. And it's Dark Man Scant. And he says, oh, boy, I started to type this here and then I went to Word since I have thoughts. Uh, one, I mostly agree with what you said. I think most people do. But, bruh, this is a business and this business model works. No, no company wants to miss that, as you called it, honeymoon period where you get hooked on new freshness. So while I feel we should have this conversation, it won't change anything because it works for them. And it and when it doesn't, C.2, if you think about it, actors have roles in TV series and movies sometimes with the hopes of it being, of it becoming a franchise that goes on for years. But if it doesn't work, they move to the next project. In my opinion, it wouldn't be surprised if the model is milk them till they leave where it doesn't matter to the publisher if the game fails as long as it makes money before it does and developers just move on to the next thing. Now, I just want to tackle that first is that absolutely. Where is it? There is I think it's like with drugs and it's, <laughs> I it, it was like a it was a is a video that I watched the Patriot Act, one of my favorite uh YouTube channels to watch. It's actually a Netflix series, but they put it on YouTube. Uh and it's crazy because they say like, you know, when it came to fentanyl, when it came to drug lords, putting fentanyl in their in their drugs even though that it would likely kill the people that, that that would take it that it was better for business because it would just replace they would just be replaced there was no redeeming quality or whatever of getting repeat customers it was so much better to just get more customers and a lot of these games do a uh, gotcha games do do not that they're I'm not, I don't want to make the comparison that they're drug companies, but that was the most recent example that I could think of. Uh, but it's better to get new players. And you guys seen this before, the gacha games. A lot of the times veteran players are like, so what do we get? <laughs> they play new players, get this, that, and the third. Even right now in uh, Exos Heroes, they're doing um, a lot of these nice, cool events. And a lot of people are like, well, that would have been nice when I first started. Luckily, we can still interact with it, which is great. Not that many gachas do that, in my opinion, where you just kind of feel like they do it for one or two people right it's either new players or returning players uh and it's like returning players get this package and you're like well that's better than what i get why do i get that because you've been playing for a while you, you you're already hooked we don't have to benefit you in any way and you're just gonna keep playing anyway but again i will disagree with the fact that it's a business and the, the business model works uh, i mean yeah it does 
it does, but just because something is currently working doesn't mean that it's working well or that it's working good. Maybe financially on that one aspect, it's working fine, but you can lose all your finances by ignoring multiple things that's going wrong in your business. I can even use uh, like the food industry. Like it, it might be, you know, preparing food a certain way might be fine because no one's maybe noticing or maybe people are saying, well, you know, it's fast food, you know, it is what it is. But even the fast food industry kind of gets like tackled and, and hit on the head. At least I know McDonald's got fucked, but you know, it's this thing where when people start to catch on to your practices, and they might see a little bit of what's going on behind the scenes, they're not gonna like it. And if you stay within that vision, I mean, again, it depends on the majority, but you stay within that vision and people will detract from you. Uh, and I think when we look at fast food, now that there's, you know, they're showing the calories and they're having better options, better health options. Uh, Burger King just got the impossible burger. So now plant-based uh, thing, no beef and stuff like that because people are, fighting back or to a certain degree now people call it can call it pandering things of that nature but it's it's those companies reacting to you know the negativity of something that's going on in their company three i honestly don't know if that if it was cheaper to play that they would make more money i'm sure they have metrics to see how many people are full free to play and some of them will never spend money on these games so lower prices might be enticing but it isn't a guarantee of sale the people willing to spend 90 dollars 180 a week are their target audience and when these games first start since the market is saturated they need to make money from day one so the whales are the initial investors that get the money coming in and then you set a president so the prices a precedent so that the prices keep going it's all about seeing how much you can milk i bought the excel's pass for 30 dollars and i've also bought passes for 10 dollars in almost every other game but since we all bought it, they will continue charging that amount. I think that's uh, very true. Uh, I, I I do disagree with the fact that I do think that making it certain stuff cheaper, not everything uh, cheaper. I do think that just reallocating the prices on certain things is what I'm more speaking of. Not that you necessarily make every, like just take everything and just slash uh, 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 the money on it. It's making stuff more reasonably priced. And I think that in a lot of other retail environments you can reasonably see that right you can reasonably see that you know more people are willing to buy when they see buy one get one free which exos heroes does have and a lot of games have it like if you buy this you get bonus this but it when you look at like the bonus in some of these gotcha games is that the bonus is not that great or it's a one-time bonus which in it, it benefits the casual spender uh but only for that one time and it doesn't actually um <clears throat> it doesn't encourage repeat buys and again, that would be back to what we're saying. We'd rather them just invest once and and then leave or never invest again. As long as we get that first boost or something like that, then we're fine. We got $100 out of you and aha, fucker, goodbye. Peace, deuces. Um, I think that making a proper economy is what, I, is what I'm going against, is what I'm going for. Because if instead of trying to get $100 up front that one time for one person, you can make thousands of dollars off of one person and it sounds cruel to say that but i don't i haven't heard a person from league of legends that buys skins and says that they regret the amount of money that they spent i i have still i i don't even know how much money i've spent in league of legends on skins cosmetics that literally have nothing to do with gameplay orientation or anything and you could say that those are two different genres but company business the way business is ran um is is generally the same I challenge people to, to, to challenge me on that, that I do think that even if it was just cosmetic and look at Valorant, I think, uh, does he bring up Valorant? No, there's another comment that brings up Valorant. I really wanted to highlight that because, you know, there are other companies that are doing this monetization stuff and they get called out even when it's just cosmetics, when it's too much money, you can, there's a, there's a League of Legends guy. I should, I should, some people wanted me to show examples. Maybe I'll go uh, into League of Legends when I get to that Valorant comment and we'll, we'll tally up how much a skin costs in, in League of Legends. And some of them are like 40, $50. And it's like, bro, that's the price of a game. But people find value in how much time they invested in League of Legends because it stood the test of time. So that not not only have they made that money back, that they, you know, that, that not sorry, not made the money back, they gained the trust of their players that this skin is worth that much money. Not only that, but now they have systems in the game where you can get those stuff for free by playing the game. Now you can, you can obtain these money getting things that use but in the past were only available through financial payment now you can get it for free by just playing the game and a lot of these games don't do that <laughs> 
and it's because they don't last that long. I, uh, the thing with Dragon Blaze uh, that they're giving out this character, that's a, uh, supposedly from what FG said, that's a five year old game. So now they can give back to the player base, but how are most of these games not surviving five years? That's the problem. I think Epic Seven is on year two. Uh, Knights Chronicle is on year three, possibly now. I think they just celebrated their second year anniversary. I, I'll, be, I'll be amazed to see what they're giving away in that game uh, because it takes a while for these games to stay and last that long. Uh, but anyway, uh, his fourth point. <laughs> we also need to remember it's all smoke and mirrors with this ish. These games always have XYZ download celebrations. It's funny this was five days ago and then now currently in Exos Heroes, yeah, they just had their 5 million downloads. I can almost say with certainty that there are not 5 million players playing. I've said that too, uh, Exos Heroes right now. I mean, look at the guild. At most, they have 30 people saying they have 1 million people playing. If we're, if we math, if we're being mathematical, that is 33,333 potential guilds, really. I wish someone would create a new guild now so we can see the number it's ranked. It's all marketing to get new plays indoctr indoctrinated in the gacha cult. Uh, every time something is changed in these games in the interest of the player, you can guarantee that the publisher looked at the numbers and realized it was more profitable in the long run to make the change. They took the lab out because it was too easy? Really? No. <laughs> what it was was too much says too easily, but the community hates auto in the Coliseum still in the game since it doesn't really give anything really. Feel like you can't keep it up and get that streaming up and going so I can support you. I'm gonna say it every time in your comments. He's been really harassing me, or he's harassing me, calling the cops. Uh, he's been really, uh, I, I promise I have things on the way. I'm just trying to work with some things. Uh, I will eventually get the, 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 the membership thing going on YouTube though. I just want it to be good. I, I don't like putting on half ass stuff, it's, it bothers me so bad i do agree with that like he i don't want everything to be exos there's a problem with certain things in the game but they didn't fix it like uh, apparently it's weird that they'll say well we'll fix this because it's not the vision so it's like this thing is really shitty in the game why didn't you fix that why didn't you take that away and fix it but they took something that was allowing people to really gain a lot of uh, of currency a uh, uh, summoning currency and they took that out and they literally haven't replaced it uh, they have talked of nothing as far as like giving compensation for taking it out of the game something that you were supposed to be able to farm for a month and they just removed it from the game and, and promised that it will eventually come back so that's a really bad look it makes them look very greedy um but yeah and then they kept dropping banners like they're keeping dropping banners on top of that so you lost about a substantial amount of monthly currency to to grind for and literally have not said what that's gonna be like when it comes back out. So very sketchy stuff. And but these games are sketchy. That's kind of how he's saying it's all smoke and mirrors. A lot of the stuff that they do is hidden behind stuff that you might not even see. Going back to the first one is that these games are evolving. These games are actually evolving, and I do have faith <laughs> that they will uh, continue to get better as long as we start pointing the stuff out and saying things. Now this next one, <laughs> I wanted to highlight it. Uh, it's a lot to read, but I wanted to highlight one thing about it is uh, I'm going to paraphrase it, but I wanted to highlight that if you guys do write long comments, I mean, I know a lot of other people like, like when they're reading the comments, they won't read the whole thing, especially once they click see more and it's like, <laughs> <laughs> just keep in mind that I think it's better if you guys write a comment, uh, like I guess somewhat summarize what you're trying to say and then like respond back to people, have a back and forth dialogue because when some people see something like this thick, it's gonna just be like, I'm not reading that shit. It's gonna be hard for me to, as you said, I'm already 20 minutes into recording and I only did two comments so far. So, you know, I don't wanna say I'll avoid these in the future, but I, I definitely want to encourage people to have a thing and then go back and forth with people with your point. Now, in the first part, what he's talking about is that the, I, I spoke about, you know, like $25 being the standard is a little bit too much. I think that that's ridiculous for a poll, like a, a poll or something like that, or he is also mentioning a selector. Uh, I do think that it's still too much uh, for one poll, uh, 20 something dollars, I think it's ridiculous. But the, the community has decided and, and of that nature, like that's kind of what has been decided and that's what people are coming to expect. They're looking, uh, like veterans are looking for that and that's what they're looking to say, like that's fine with me. And that kind of goes back to what I was saying before is that they didn't complain about that. They were fine with that. And I happen to be the minority. I might be the minority in this situation, which is fine. I think it's okay if I'm the minority. I don't have to always be 
right. I personally won't spend that. The uh, only time I'm ever gonna spend that is when I'm trying to make some type of video or something of that nature. This guy's right. They are looking at other games. They're looking at the trends. They're seeing what's popular and they're making decisions based off that. So if they see that no one has complained across multiple games that it costs $25 to do a single poll, a multi-poll, then why would they lower that? Because me and a couple other people think it's it's too much money, they're not gonna do it. Same thing with, uh, go back to fast food. How much does it cost now to get a, a meal? I, I Like I said, these companies, these companies are like right alongside each other. Uh, you go to, uh, let's say, Subway. Subway, $5 foot long, $5 foot long. Carry it all up and down, right? And then eventually that kind of went away. Now you go to Subway right now, it's it's like seven, eight dollars for like a foot long. Uh, yes, that was a promotion. Five dollar foot long was a promotion, but you don't. It, it went away for a long time. I think it's slightly back now, depending on. But it's not like any foot long. It it, was, it used to be any foot long, but now it's uh it's separated by the days. Like on Monday you can get this one, on Tuesday you can get this one, because they started to realize that these other fast food chains. Are charging eight nine dollars for a burger fries and a drink why are we undercutting ourselves for no fucking reason so what do they do they started to price their stuff at the same same level so now you, you're not getting a deal when you go to subway you're getting the same price point that you get with when you go to another place you like pizza do you go to pizza shops i know i go to pizza shops now all of a sudden before meatball parm was like the regular thing it was a meatball parm chicken parm hero or whatever like that and then eventually they probably saw that in other food industries that their chart like a whopper a whopper with cheese right whopper with cheese but now it's like well we'll charge you the regular price but if you want cheese we'll charge you an extra dollar it's like wait why the fuck are you doing that it was it used to be this price and it'd be like hey man we you know but they saw that they can make an extra dollar by just removing something and charging for it it's the same thing that the gacha games do i said a lot of these companies do same similar things sometimes it does hurt the consumer the only way that they'll start changing that is if people bark back on them like some people bark back when they started to receive, receive the price of milk and and, and essentials eggs start skyrocketing in prices and people would say okay this is fucking stupid we need to do something about this so they do change it and that that's kind of like the back and forth the same back and forth there is the same back and forth i want when i when i play a game because i'm passionate about gaming so that's why i'm i come at it like that when i buy food i just you know same thing i might be ignorant i'm just like eh, whatever that's the price <laughs> that's the price i don't care now he agrees with me on uh the rng crafting i think rng crafting is inherently bad i do understand why it, it, they do do it because it, it it promotes longevity in games when there's when there's more rng like crafting you can't exactly get what you want so you still have to grind you're still grinding but you might not get what you want so you have to grind more instead of giving you exactly what you want and then the game technically is less it's the same reason why in a um rpg based game action adventure game once your character gets maxed out you're pretty much done they don't want that they obviously want you to keep playing to kind of keep you within their systems and hoping that you spend money and sometimes they'll actually incentivize some type of consistency with money it's like uh with these uh i think summoners word did it. a lot of people supposedly didn't like it uh, like, you know, being able to craft certain things onto your gear. And then lastly, he agrees with me, the monetization schemes. Like, I like, I always will say that I don't mind uh, a game having monetization. It just has to be done correctly. You have to do it correctly or else instead of it being, like I, I said, I, I've never heard someone say anything. That might be the end of the video, it's just going into League of Legends. That's the. I never heard anyone say that League of Legends skins cost too much. They might have. I might have been ignorant to it, but I've never specifically heard that from anyone. That they cost too much, they're not worth it, or we shouldn't do that. I just never heard of it. Never heard of it. <laughs> I've always said, like, I've heard that skin's dope. How much does it cost? 15, 20? Yo, I'm getting that skin. Like, I, I never heard of it. So, Amelia, thank you so much. But like I said, I think you should lower that down. Amelia Locelli. We're getting there. Turbo! Uh, unfortunately, I think these companies perceive target demo, I think demographic. I make good enough money that I don't care if I spend $100 a month on these games if I'm enjoying them. I played FGO, FFDOO, Raid, Shadow Legends, Fire Emblem, Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, and Sword Art Online, MD. All of these have the same problem, endgame content and resource squeeze. Some are better than others, but like right now in Exos, I am level 55 and probably 95% of the characters, not including the fake cores, obviously, and it's not 
a lot of ways to get Zez anymore. He's talking about he's in, he's pretty much at, he's after the honeymoon period. Every game has the initial new player boost to get you hooked to pull, summon, scout more, and then gradually pull it away. Like the degenerates we are, we chase the summon high and spend to get more currency. Eventually you realize that the game doesn't care about long-term players and you leave to repeat the process on a new game. That's me, an idiot, but at least I'm self-aware. Now, hey, I I'm the one with self-deprecating jokes, okay, buddy? It is important to what he's saying here is that, and I've said this before, it's kind of like the companies don't really care about, you know, losing players or even if the game dies. And I think that that's the most offensive thing to me is like, I feel like at least the other company, when they put out like a product or something like that, like Burger King putting out a new Whopper or something like that, uh, I, I guess I can slightly, but like when these companies come out with these games and like, I, I, I wish I can see if it really affects them that negatively if a game dies. I wish I could see like, people did point out to me, they did criticize me and they said that, you know, you gotta understand that these games like Exos Heroes, again, I use that as an example. They have a lot of voice acting in the game that costs a lot of money. That's why a lot of games, if you guys don't know, a lot of games where you it's only text-based, it's because it's very expensive to do voice acting. You know, um, Exos Heroes has voice acting in it as well. Not throughout everything, you know, but Exos has like a, uh, did I say Exos twice? I meant to say Epic Seven. Epic Seven has some voice acting in it. Like the characters have a few lines in there. Uh, Exos has, uh, the whole story is pretty much voice acted, you know, like, so that costs a lot of money. Um, so why even invest in that? And that's why I think you see a lot of games that they don't invest into that. They know that they can make a good enough game without adding voices or just doing the voice lines like Epic Seven and, and kind of get away with it. They might invest into that and like people like me and others would be like, just skip the story, it doesn't matter. Uh, and it's like, bro, we spent like mad bread on that. And then the next company will be like, well, if every people are skipping the story, we're not gonna invest in the story. We're not gonna make a good story. Uh, we're just gonna say, they're gonna skip it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well not make it that good, you know, right up the alley and same thing It's like these guys aren't gonna play our games that long anyway I think that that sentiment also is with it. They they also know that I think that that's the problem with Leaving a game when it makes a few bad decisions or one or two bad decisions I think that that doesn't help the gotcha community because that means that you like the beginning of it You like the honeymoon phase and then when the honeymoon phase is over, you leave. So then that means that a game only has to be good in the honeymoon phase and there's no incentive to actually be better later. <laughs> Why should they? You're not gonna stay anyway. You're showing it or the statistics show that you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna leave in a, in, a, in a few months, might as well get the most money out of you. And I don't, I can't blame a company for that at that point, if the statistics show that that's what's gonna happen. And I bring, I'm bringing back League of Legends. Maybe they have statistics to show that they were gonna have such a long run or they just happened to run into it and they lucked out uh same thing with fortnite fortnite probably remember that was originally some zombie defense game <laughs> and all of a sudden now they just realize oh we can we can make we can make this last we need to give these certain gacha games the the impression that they can make it last and then after that remember epic games legitimately orgoed paragon the game of the mobile game paragon a game that was not doing particularly bad it was uh, struggling to get the same notoriety as like a Smite League of Legends, but they decided to give up on Paragon, literally take all the, the devs and all that other stuff and put it into Fortnite. They saw that the Fortnite was so good that they should just invest everything into it. The same thing that Riot did with League of Legends. Just, we got something, we're gonna, we're gonna ride it out. Look where Fortnite is now. And yeah, there are a ton of other Battle Royale games now and things of that nature, but that's kind of what I want. I want the Fortnite, the the best battle royale. I want the best gotcha, and I want to see what it looks like, and uh, I want to see what the monetization is. I want to see how a game gets there. But we can't get there if we have that mentality of just going to the next game. Epic Exos Heroes is greedy as fuck. I'm gonna go play Tails. Oh my god, Tails is go good. Then it's like Tails sucks. Okay, I'm gonna go to this one. Raid Shadow Legends. Okay, now I'm just gonna go to the like. <laughs> it just we just keep hopping. And that, there's no incentive for a company to, to invest into past six months of a game if that's, you're not gonna stay there for that long. So I, I, I agree to the sentiment and, I, and this is me actually siding with the Gacha game companies in that regard. I, I can agree to them on that. Next one, it's a long video. <laughs> <laughs> this one I highlighted for specific reasons. I suggest you play King's Raid. Uh, it's Pards Gaming because uh, it's a legit free to play game. You can earn gems for purchasing uh, heroes and for the item gotcha just by doing dailies. And the thing 
that you will spend a lot is your time you can purchase the hero off the bat without even spending money even the new ones and the only gotcha is the stats of the items and you can spend it if you want to to max the cat the max the hero but Mostly you can do it by just grinding. Please try and check and review it so other players can know how good this game, how good this game for free to play and the game is now four years old and I think so it proves that this game can compete. And this is going back to what I was saying earlier that the longer these games survive, they actually can start giving out a bunch of stuff. I had no idea what King's Raid was when it, when it first started, but I'm pretty sure it had standard practices, but they probably saw that they had something good and they wanted to expand on it. That, they, that we can take this the long haul. And I wanted to highlight this comment also is because we need to find what these good games are doing. I am a thousand percent sure, 100% MFO, a thousand percent sure that if some, some, the stuff that some of these games are doing at like after two, three years, they could have done from the beginning and I think it would have worked out just fine. That is my main argument, like when they're giving out all this free stuff and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I could have kind of been doing that from the beginning and maybe people would have like lasted a longer than a year. That's the counter argument. Like, so yeah, maybe you're doing a shitty job. So I leave in six months. That's why I'm leaving in six months. It's not because I don't like the game is that you're doing a shitty job. So it's like when I hear a, a gotcha game surviving four years, that's really good. That means that people were investing themselves into a game and it worked out. And there's a lot of these games that literally shut down and or they just stop getting updates and people still kind of play them because they it's like not the fear of missing out, which we'll talk about a little bit later. But it's the, the aspect of you invested so much into this game, you kind of can't leave it alone. Uh, I actually still feel that with Epic 7. I still feel like I should just maybe I should just uh, play my account a little bit. You know, I, I have money into it. Maybe I should just do my dailies, you know, every day. And it's like, bro, I don't have time. Why am I even thinking about this? <laughs> it's crazy I think that people really undermine like the mental hold that these games do have on you because we're gamers we love games it's not like it should be a big huge surprise to you when people are emotionally attached to games that they play here we go so this one is from Den Setsuno 64 in him my fucking opinion it's bad idea to make things too cheap if you can throw 10 bucks at any banner and get a unit it cheapens the unit and cheapens your premium currency you've been farming for why would you spend an hour a day on a game to get one fifth of a 10 pull when you can throw 10 bucks at something and achieve literally hundreds of hours of progress? It kills playtime. Why would you want a gotcha where every person has every unit? It destroys your identity as a player and ruins variety, the spice of life. Another byproduct of making things too cheap, it will allow whales to have a field day, duping every single unit to hell while you might not want to spend hundred dollars on every banner, a whale would have no problem. Now, I'm gonna pause it right there, is that whales can do that regardless. Whether the whether it's $10, uh, and I of course I disagree with them, right? <laughs> uh, but whether it's $10 or $100, if we're talking about a whale, we're talking about a person, I just had a person recently said that they, I spent $3,000 on this game. Now, what $3,000 gets him depends on the pricing of the game. So it doesn't matter, let's say if it's $100, right? So what is that, 30? Let's say it's it's $100 per unit, right? So that's 30, I'm doing quick math, I could be wrong. Now it, he obviously can get more units at $10 than he can get at 100. But if you put it at $10, at least someone else can get some other stuff too. Uh, I think that that's my, my main point when it comes down to lessening the price of certain things. It's, I don't care what a whale's gonna do. They're gonna be at the highest, etch, like they're gonna be at the highest, right? They want to be there. They're willing to spend money to do it anyway. But it sucks that a casual spender can't do that at all. When you put it at 100, when you put it at 200, you can't interact with that at all. That banner that we were talking about a little bit earlier, when it was a uh, $700, uh, and it was a the idea of the banner was awesome, but you couldn't reliably interact with it as a casual spender. It was the $700 to fully interact with it was too much. If they made it that you can incrementally kind of interact with it, which technically it was, it would make it a little bit easier, but the way that the pricing of other things that would allow you to interact with that banner would have just been too much. And I think that that's what my issue is, is that you make something 10, $15, and then you just make it that you want to make those type of purchases on a frequent basis. Or maybe I shouldn't say frequent, maybe regularly or on a regular basis. And I think that that's fine. All right. So in let's say Exos Heroes to drop $100, get the unit plus five dupes and proceed to stop you while you're crying, pay to win, pay to win. High prices are honestly there to protect the casual spenders. I don't agree with that. I don't. 
uh, just because the game has lower prices and it is cheaper for you doesn't mean it is cheaper exclusively to you. Others are there too and will capitalize on deals that you may be passing on. That's true. Uh, Exos Heroes got that right, yet people are ripping it apart for its high conversion rate for crystals over X, uh, Exos. Go look at the monthly shop and you get Zez at literally a three times better rate for your first few purchases. Notice it's for the first few purchases then it'd be back to purchasing Zez at an extremely inflated rate if you decide to whale it up. This high pricing is pr protection mechanic. Again, helping the casual spenders are free to play. It makes me so frustrated that people don't understand that. Exos has the best pricing tactics that I've seen in, in a gotcha. 48 bucks for 46 pulls from a monthly pack, a little over $1 per pull, good deal. Afterwards, $88 for 31 pulls, almost $3 per pull, bad deal, pass. Advantage, casual spenders. Now the, again, I'm, this is, I love this guy because he came out, he's a, he's a regular commenter, by the way. Um, I still disagree with him, but he, he at least, he, he might even be one of the 10 people that, uh, that downvoted my video, but he came out, bro, and I love him for it. Now, the issue with when you do that, right, when you set up a thing that the first thing, like, and I said before, it, it kind of combines with a lot of stuff. I, I didn't order this in this order, but it just happens to work out, is that they might be doing first purchase of stuff because it's going to benefit a lot of people when they're hyped up on the game. They love it. They're going to spend money because they're in the hype phase. Then when you look at it, what everything else afterwards, it's higher price. This is the same theory that they actually had with cigarettes. Cigarettes, um, to my knowledge, uh, was that they had one of the things that they thought would be a good idea was to raise the price of cigarettes so that people would be discouraged to smoke like it would be too expensive then they started doing these programs that like if you didn't smoke you could you could have bought a house and all this other nonsense trying to discourage people from smoking but then they had to remove it and lower the price back down because people were still smoking they were addicted it didn't it didn't matter and I, I don't want i'm not comparing smoking to playing a gotcha game but it's the similar kind of concept that just because you raise the price of something doesn't necessarily mean that the, those people will stop interacting with it uh they, they might still be hooked they might still be in the thing where they spent 20 dollars and got an awesome deal of it and now they're looking for that same deal a month later and then it's like fuck it's like how you put it it's 88 dollars now like i really want that though <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want it and they're gonna invest into it and also I think what I replied back to him is that this m math gymnastics that you have to do is also a problem in itself that's why I like to do the math on my channel and I'll, I'll break down what makes stuff good I've been doing it in most gotchas like a unit is good because technically the 30% damage boost that they get from this source and I like to break that stuff down because sometimes most of the time the game doesn't really tell you how it works they, but when it comes to the monetization, it's even worse because usually you have currency within a currency within a currency, and it started off with your original USD. Your your well, if you're obviously if you're American, but it starts off with your money, and then it kind of starts to dwindle, and you don't really understand how much money you spent. I say to this day, I don't know how much money I spent on Exos Heroes. I don't know how much money I've spent on Epic Seven. I don't know how much money I spent on Nice Chronicles. I have no idea how much money I spend. But when you have it something simple like ten dollars is twenty dollars. Twenty dollars to get that. It's very easy. But you start it, it starts to get cloudy. It, it just starts to get cloudy. Uh even League of Legends. I've spent a lot of money. I have no idea why because I spend money on riot points and I spend riot points to get XYZ. It's to detach you and it's 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 ugh <laughs> Like as much as I, I agree, disagree with what he's saying, I don't think that it's to protect casual spenders. I think it's to make money up front, um, make a good deal up front to really engage into the, the hype of the of the game. And as it goes on, they just have standard pricing that apparently apparently to the other posts is that they have more standardized pricing. And if whether you think it's good or bad, it's fine. I still think that the it, stuff should be cheaper. And and when he speaks about making a unit feel cheap, if the unit, in my opinion, I still think that units, heroes in these games and a hero collector, in my opinion, are not the, the thing that you should be struggling to get. I think that heroes and a hero collector should be the easiest thing to get. Like the fighters in a fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> when a fighters in a fighting game uh, until most recently within a couple years have been what you get everything within the game and that's how you judge the game how many starting characters does the game have and when they release characters for uh, a price 15 20 dollars or like a fighting pass you get like three or four additional characters 
that became some type of contention, but some people saw value into it. But when you look at this game or, or gotcha games in a whole, and it's like, they really try to make this, this getting a hero not as easy as I, in my opinion, as it should be. I think that the, the as he said, um, it destroys your identity as a player and ruins variety. What destroys your identity as a player in Rose Variety is when the game does not actually allow you to use the same unit and use it differently. That's my issue. If we all right now have the same unit, let's say, let's say it's a 5v5. When we put a 5v5 and they're all the same exact hero, if that's the only way that my units are the same as yours because we use the same units, I think that the game itself is flawed. I think that the game itself is flawed. That there should be more interaction, more ways through gear, through passive, like like being able to manipulate certain things that will make it that we can use the same exact team and be, be used differently. It shouldn't be the hero. Because when it's the heroes, that's when you get into the, that means that summoning too important to power. And I don't think that summoning should be important to power. I think that gear or, you know, artifacts or like weird stuff that you can add onto your character to make it a little bit different. Like uh, Epic 7 to me, I love Epic 7 and I love Knight's Chronicles. Their gear system to me is one of the best because you know, you can give a unit counter that doesn't have counter and then all of a sudden now it's counter. Like this unit that you thought was a pure DPS uh, bursty nuki god, you thought it would be funny because you felt like being different. Your identity as a player is to be funny and to catch people off guard. You gave the, you made it a tanky unit and you made it counter based. That's variety it's not that we can't all have the same character it's that game should allow me to express myself through those characters i love tanky counter bullshit but in currently in exos i can't even do that there's only certain characters that can do that and there's certain characters that do certain things and you have to get those certain characters to do that so in that aspect of it i don't like exos for that i think that the gear system needs to be better uh they they do have it where the the stones are certain things but i think it could be better i would love it to be like nice chronicles oh your multi-striking is increased and then i can increase my multi-strike and i could do that on any hero yeah there's some heroes that it's going to do better on but i could do it on any hero that i want but i think that that's where the personality of a game comes from and i i do intend for the ufo videos to be longer because there's obviously going to be more comments um but if you guys want me to maybe tackle less and i guess this is i should put this in the beginning if you guys want me to tackle less comments, um, maybe I can do that as well, but Crispy Bacon, love his uh, title. I walked away from gotchas for a year, mainly from the things you brought up. Then I realized most mobile games are like gotchas, even to the point of having a summoning system, even if it doesn't make sense with the game. Like at this point, I hop around to the next shiny game because that's how the mobile gaming market is designed. The money devs are getting from one game is usually making the next cash grab. Personally, I think the cycle won't end until government regulation enforces it or people involved change. From the devs to the players, mindsets would have to think of these games as less disposable. I agree. The reason why I brought this up is because um, government regulation is very contentious because, you know, I feel like the government doesn't truly understand gamers. Not yet. They're, they're getting there. But I still think that the whole of society does not understand us. I would love for them to. It's, it's, we, we, a lot of breakthrough over the years uh now being a gamer is not like that bad now now parents are gamers now that we've grown up right women are now gamers when before it was very taboo for women to even be engaging into that and a lot of the times i feel like if you see these like some some cases like if a kid plays like fucking call of duty or halo and they still think they they, they video games lead to violence and stuff like that i'm sometimes i'm a little bit scared of government regulation when it comes to games but it does suck that the gambling aspect or these predatory practices in these games should only stop because if the government gets involved and i think that, that i don't want that to happen I, I would love for us to check our own self so that the government doesn't have to get involved because when the government gets involved they're going to make decisions for us and inherently that could be really really bad last but not least thank you guys so much for chilling out with me i hope you guys enjoyed this okay i found it jaded johnny is the one that said that jaded johnny sorry i cut your name out of the picture it says i couldn't agree with you uh couldn't agree with you more uh more specifically i agree with the second part which is more readily known as fear of missing out fear of missing out is huge uh, i always tell my friends that if you're not okay with missing out because you miss a day or even a week 
these are not for you. These games are designed for daily play for varying amounts of hours. This is why I play high respect for games that respect your time. Destiny 2, for example, has completely lost that respect for me. In Destiny 2, the fear of missing out is crazy. That if you come from back, if you come back from a month off, you are way too behind. Quests for guns take hours, even days to complete. Yeah, I get that they're exclusive, but think about a human being's time. Time is the most valuable commodity and not enough developers understand. Exos has taken a step in the right direction. I just added words to his comment. Exos has taken the right steps in terms of valuing your time because of allowing quick battle, offline exploration, but it's still lacking in addressing its blatant fear of missing out. Uh, this is not exclusive to them though. All ga game stores now encourage this. To reference another game, Valorant has daily deals with four skins you can't pick. This is ridiculous considering League of Legends has all skins open to players except for seasonal ones. Again, I went on my rant, but you're right. You went on a rant. Did you see this other news perk? <laughs> uh, gotcha games have their identity, but they're not taking enough steps in the right directions quick enough, even when the community has laid out numerous evolution ideas. He hints on Fear of Missing Out. I, I I mentioned this briefly before, is that I still feel like I want to play Epic 7. I, I'm like, I just, ah, I just, I, when I see the new characters, I'm like, maybe I should just, mm, maybe Seven Deadly Sins, oh, the, the Attack on Titans. I feel like I'm missing out. I feel like I'm missing out on the cool thing. There's a lot to that. There's a lot to that that that, that messes with your mental. And I think that that's stuff that we should be able to speak out about because I, I can see the argument against it, obviously. Like he said that he stopped playing, what did he say? He stopped playing for a couple of months and then he was too far behind. I think that that's also like reasonable. <laughs> I don't think that you should be able to step away from a game, whether it's Destiny 2 or any game really, and feel like you're still ahead. I think that that would be a problem in the development cycle that you could take a couple months off and still play. That one, like that, that's one of the hardest things to tackle. And I, I guess we can come to some type of collector. What do you guys think about that? Like as far as, hold on, I'm gonna pop up. League of Legends, cause we, we spoke too much about League of Legends. What do you guys think about that? Like how much time do you think like, well, right now, I think uh, Exos and a lot of games uh, that I played, it takes about, I'd say, an hour at most to do your dailies. As far as going beyond that, like, is that too intrusive, you know, if they, if you were to do that? Now, you can see League of Legends in the background. I'm going to pop this up. Can't pop it up any further, unfortunately. Now, let me first lay this out properly, is that in League of Legends, uh, skins have varying prices. Uh, they're not all the same, depending on, as you can see, this one's 1350 RP, and this one's 1820. And obviously that means that the higher one are the ones with the more fancy, smancy things. You can also like legendaries, uh, which are, in my opinion, pretty good. It pretty much means that it's a skin that like the animations change. They kind of have different dialogue. Uh, they say different things than their original version of the character. I like these skins. I think that they're the best. So let's remember 1820. And there's ultimate skin. These are, this is the standard part. This one's cheaper for some reason. These skins are 3250, right? So let's go into RP. One was 18, this one's 32, right? So this is classic. So one's 18, right? So if I want that 18 skin, that's $20. That's for a skin. You know, I get really no competitive advantage. But if I wanted to get the other one, the 32, right? I'd have to spend 35. I'd have to spend up to $35 for that one skin right the thing why i don't mind that is that there's nothing that's forcing me to get this skin even when the when these skins first came out and they were super flashy super in your face bam 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 um it was just kind of like well if i really use the character if i really like the character i'd i'd invest that 30 something dollars i don't mind and if there's a sale that's going on currently i, I personally don't know maybe it costs more but even if it was the next tier, which was, hold on, I could have swore like $50, let's say it was in this tier, it's $50. Uh, still, $50 is pretty much the price of a game, right? Uh, very close to a price of a game. But some people wouldn't mind that because they're gonna be using Ezreal for fucking years to come. I've been playing League of Legends for like 10 years plus. I'll, I can say Lux has given me $50 worth of entertainment. Misfortune has given me $50 worth of, of entertainment. I think I could say that uh, because the game has been out for so long. I think my counter argument to a lot of this stuff would be like, maybe be cheap up front and then later on drop that $100 packet. You know, like that, that, that people were like, you know what, this game has earned $100 single will purchase from me i really enjoy it but they kind of ask for it up front when you know by using this like i said like taking advantage of the honeymoon phase and stuff like that and that's kind of where i think that i combat them with it's just like you haven't earned it the games are usually are somewhat bare bones when they first come out they're not like there's not a lot going on and a lot of things are coming soon and 
you don't know guild wars coming soon don't you worry it's there's always not much in the beginning of the games but after you know a few months yeah you know maybe the game is worth some 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 money but it looks greedy when you're asking for that up front so hope you guys enjoyed the video it's much longer but i do intend for these to be longer when i'm looking into responses from you guys in comparison to when i'm just doing a video and i'm speaking about things that i have already have somewhat organized so yeah this is hour long of me recording i don't know how long the video is going to be next mfo episode will be coming after this though so this is going to drop earlier in the day and then the new mfo episode is going to drop later on in the day so hope you guys enjoyed uh let me know again if you think that this should be shorter uh or anything like that but yeah <laughs> but that's mfo and now you know and just remember like comment and subscribe and of course that every day at the casino is your lucky day and i'll see you guys in the next video peace